The grasslands, plateaus, and mountains might look like Wyoming, but this natural terrain lies southeast of Durban, where professional hunter Chris Broster of Crusader Safaris leads clients over familiar country. That black wildebeest was really cool. I didn't know it was on the agenda. I knew they were in the area because that is sort of the grazing animal of the plains of Southern Africa. Uh, we had an exciting black wildebeest hunt. It's pretty challenging out in the open. So you've got to sit pretty tight. They've got good eyesight, likes to run in circles and figures of eight. So you go to a place where they usually hang out, move them off, and there's a good chance that they'll come back. When we saw those guys up on the top of those Stormberg Mountain plateaus, I was pretty excited. I don't know, they're a freaky looking animal. They sort of look in broadside profile. They look like a rhinoceros. They've got that roach of a mane there on their necks, which makes them look real hump-necked. And then they've got that goofy hair, that stiff hair coming off the end of their noses. And in profile, it looks like they've got a little bit of a rhinoceros nose coming off. There's some black wildebeest. Where? About a mile. Away out there. Way over there. We could not get anywhere within shooting range of these guys until my impressive professional hunter Chris hit on a neat idea. He said, let's just get on a high point and sit. They're in the area, they're always up here. At some point they're gonna crisscross and we might get a shot. We might be able to belly closer, but they might come right to us too. I can see them way out there. And you know what I may do is if they just stay there and come out behind them and get them moving. But let's just see what they do. We've got lots of time, so if they're just staying there, we can get him to maybe just give them a little bump and they might they right. might head our way. Hey, here come, come a couple from right over here. They're right in with those uh, blesbuck. Okay, yes. See, they yes. just walked into them? It's a cow and a calf. Yeah. They mix together like that, huh? But they all hang out together. The blesbuck and the wildebeest, the zebra. So they were in mixed herds like that years ago? Yes, and the springbuck, the red hartebeest hang out with the blesbuck. That's just like our bison and antelope back in the States. Mm -hmm. Millions of them roaming the plains, and then the market hunting's what got them. Un unregulated hunting. You know, if you control it, you know, just harvest annual surplus, just no different than cattle or anything else, you can have them in perpetuity. That's actually interesting you say that. A similar thing happened with the black wildebeest as happened with the, with the bison in the States. In the 1950s, there were only 600 black wildebeest left in Africa. The conservationists suddenly woke up and landowners, everyone worked together and they realized there was a problem and the black wildebeest was going to be extinct pretty soon. And through conservation and sustainable utilization, there's over 100,000 black wildebeest in, in Africa 50 years later. Mm -hmm. And that's just because there's been a value put onto, onto wildlife and good conservation management. So has it all been done on government reserves or private ground or what? Private ground, government reserves, everyone's worked very well together. That's good. See, there goes a bull back in the front there. The one in the front's the bull? Yeah. Huh. Goofy things are going right back. They're called the clowns of the plains. You'll see them, they just run in circles. That's what they're doing. Boy, they're coming. There's one okay, right there's, there's the beast there. Well, here we are. We've got an opportunity to hunt a big bull. Chris had seen a pretty good sized one running with this big herd of cows and calves. And they're crazy animals. I mean, you see them from 600 yards away and they suddenly throw their tails in the air and then it's just and they're running off like they've been shot at every day of their lives. Boy, they're coming. Did you just go? Okay, there's, yeah, there there's our come. big bull in the front there. Oh, oh yeah. Just, just, just stick on him. You can see his body's quite a bit bigger. Oh yeah, he's quite a bit bigger. Never gonna stop. The bull's still going in the front. Right? He's still in the front. Okay, they're, they're slowing down. They're slowing down. God. They're slowing down. 
Okay, how they've far? stopped. How far is that? 280, 280. Okay, there. You've got an open shot. Oh, he smoked him. He's going down. There he goes. Right on. Good shot. Right on. Good shot. Wow, that, that did him in nicely. They don't often go down that quick. No, he was... Shot him about there. He was at the edge of this. Yeah, he was at the thing there and he ran, ran about this 10 way. yards, 20 yards. Oh, I can see a horn sticking up right there. Isn't that a horn? Yeah, there's horns though. It was nice and long. It wasn't so. Now it is. Okay, we're good. Oh. Yeah, well, it's a, he's wide and he's long. So you look for the length of the horn? Yeah, you see, you want him to be level. Okay. There. Then you I know you just got a really big bull. Like a, a smaller bull will stop about okay. over there. Mm -hmm. It's like five mm -hmm. inches different. Mm -hmm. And then he's got nice spread and big, big bosses. Look how gnarly he is there. He's it's really dried out. Yeah. Cracked up. Is that a sign of an older bull? Yeah, that's an old, old mature stud. <laughs> he's got this cool white mane. Check it. Look at his mane over oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that hump that I was always seeing. Yeah. And you know, in the profile, they, they look like a rhino because they've got this big hump neck. Big chest, and, and then, then he's this got his up like like a horn, a blunt horn sticking up on him. That yeah. is a peculiar looking animal. He's, he's got a big white tail too, like a horse. And they call it the white tailed gnu, right? White tailed gnu. Do they pronounce it gnu or nu? Gnu. Gnu. When he came running right at us, <laughs> that old head. Okay, there. You got an open shot. Hit him nice perfectly shot. in the shoulder. Yeah. You say that? John Black. Good job, partner. <laughs>
Man, how many days have we been looking for those guys? Yeah, six, five? Five or six days That's we've been out there looking for them. Fine. Ah, there he is. There he is. I, I can see. Cool. Right on. Oh, yeah. Man, That's a beautiful old bush buck. That makes for a nice hunt to be able to target specific animals yeah. like that. And it's not easy, you know, it's it's tough, it takes time, patience, you gotta hunt them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not you're not just gonna walk into a field and find a ram yeah. like everything. Uh, we seen. found that out. We've we been looking that. for one all week. I mean, this is the first ram I've seen. Yeah, Ron, this is a very mature animal. It's even rubbed down a little bit, yeah. Did Horn, now do they favor one side or another like sheep do? Yeah. And wear one down? That's exactly what it is. Yeah. It was probably pretty long out there too. Oh, I guess it had to have been a lot longer. As thick as it is, right? Yeah. Say. This one's pointier. Here's the twist. The spirals. So just like an eland, sort of. Yeah, and a neola. He's the smallest of the of the four spiral horns we get here in, in South Africa. So the the eland's the biggest, eland, then the kudu, then the kudu, then the neola, and then the bushbuck. And, and that's it for the spiral horned antelope here in South Africa. In Southern Africa. Nice. Yeah. Well, what do you think? We get this guy uh, put up and go see if we can't find that eland. That's what we'll do, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Boy, that is an old ram. Last morning luck. Hey, I didn't think we were ever going to get one. I mean, this is the last day, my friends. <laughs>